Radio Rahim here with the alien, the executioner, the legend, Bernard Hopkins, getting us set up for another super fight. Canelo has picked yet another challenging opponent. When did you find out that Sergey Kovalev was on Canelo's hit list at 175 pounds? About three or two fights ago when Eric Gomez in the ring after the Daniel Jacobs fight said that he's thinking about fighting Sergey Kovalev and what do I think? Eric Gomez asked me what do I think in the ring right after the Daniels fight. I said, really? I said, can he make that weight? Is he coming to his minute? He said, yeah, he said he wants to fight him. If anybody could take that challenge and be successful, and that was then that I had a little, sp a little like, oh, wait a minute. You, like, he wants to fight light heavy or catch weight? No, he wants to fight him at light heavy. That to me says, okay, that's a dangerous fight. But what do you think? You've been in there with him. That's why it's dangerous. Mm. But fast forward a year and a half to two years later. This, to me, is the time, even with the danger, but not as dangerous as then, to get it now. Mm. And I gave my, I will say, verbal blessing of having an experience with at least one of them, Sergey, that the style and the commitment that Canelo have shown me through fights, through his division, even at 68, is going to be key in this fight. If you're in Kovalev's camp when that call comes in, do you tell him this is a good idea? To fight Canelo? Yes. What do we have to lose? He have, very, he have everything to go, but listen. He have more to gain than more to lose. We know titles are respected, depending on which one you're talking about. But we also know that as Sergey age and his accomplishments, that when you look at not just the financial part, you're looking at a guy that's coming up from 60. You're looking at Canelo, who's experienced just as well as Sergey Kovalev when it comes to longevity and amateur and all that stuff. But when you also know that both guys know each other from the past, both guys have been in their comfort zone together in Big Bear or whatever they worked and trained at. There's pictures floating around where it looked like a 19, 17 year old Canelo and a 20 something year old Sergey in the gym. I believe this talk about what we're gonna see don't have nothing to do with the way this fight's gonna be. What are this fight's missing? going. This fight's going. To, what they missing? Yeah, they missing that Sergey Kovalev is more than just who his name says as a crusher. Because I was in there, and things that I thought I could explore wasn't there, mm. and the age had nothing to do with it. That jab that Canelo seems to have problems with when he fought other guys that was good jabbers. Mm. That is like a pistol or a jackhammer as a construction worker tear down that concrete. Is the body the kryptonite uh, for Ko Sergey Kovalev as people think it is? I think Canelo's IQ and what he's learned and got better fight by fight than a guy that's who he is, going to be who he is, no matter what day it is. I believe one guy has a lot of room still to learn and learning, which is to me dangerous for a guy that's taken on a Canelo right now, then a guy that just hit a wall, but he's just there. He has his top degree you can get. After that, there's nothing else you can get. And I think that Sergey is who he is and is going to be. And his bell out of any dangerous situation, winning or losing, is his punch. I'm hearing that's going to be a factor whether he can land the punch 
that bails him out. I'm hearing you give Kovalev more credit, uh, maybe than I expected, and more than you gave Triple G. The one question I have in closing is everyone's talking about the size difference, but is it possible that this might be the most dangerous Canelo we see, the most comfortable Canelo we see? Is 175 pounds not having to worry about cutting weight and coming in comfortable, maybe a greater threat than he's ever been to anybody? But maybe not as energized and maybe not as speed and fast and maybe not as um, uh, uh, energetic that he was when he was super, I mean, middleweight, not necessarily um, light heavyweight. So what do he sacrifice and trade and give up? You can't have both. You can't have the things that made you who you are, help got you the big contract. And now you want that everything that you had here. And now you go up 15 pounds. And now you want to inject that into this weight division and still be the same. It doesn't. You, it, it, it normally doesn't work that way. What are you giving up? See, the billion dollar question should be, what do you think he's given up to dare to be great at light heavyweight? And... Whatever he gives up, is it going to be a factor against him, negative, or is it going to be a positive? We can he afford to give up and still be great and never camouflage, or camouflage and never be exposed by experience at this level champion like Sergey Kovalev? If he can go ahead and establish that he belongs, Canelo. And that is his time, early, body or no body, or both, attack. Then it will be said that he is more comfortable, but I'm telling you it won't be that. He must mentally beat him first. He must rough him up. He must Andre Ward him early, and then he must beat Canelo later. <laughs> I'd say he must execute him. He must alien him. There is no greater mind scientist in this box of in this uh, world of boxing scientists than Bernard Hopkins. You beat a lot of guys before they climb through the ropes. It frustrated a lot of guys once they were in there. I hear you saying that that might be what Canelo does have to do to win this fight. Always a pleasure to hear your analysis to get <laughs> the Buddy scientific Raheem. approach. Blowing up the mic as always. <laughs> Good to see you. And keep the Raheem and the radio playing, because it's going to be war November 2nd, the zone. Peace. Alien executioner legend, Radio Raheem with Bernard Hopkins.